Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Loading. We're gonna do a simple one in this video. Um, basically, the resampling of image, but we're gonna do it all inside SketchUp. We don't gonna use um, the modifier or stuff. There is one node that I almost miss. It's called the uh, image image node. Yeah, this guy is quite interesting. Um, I'll call it image demo. There's actually another one, image decompose. I think this one is a slight variation of this. Um, they did a different thing, but the one I'm gonna focus on is this image node. Um, for this one, we're gonna need an image and I'm gonna open an image real quick. Let's see, I'm gonna use the import plane because I like that way to open an image. Let's see, my bridge host, okay. This one gonna work for us. Um, okay, we actually just need one of them. Import image, select one. And with this guy, we want to be able to load the sequence. So instead of single image, we want it to be image sequence, and we know there are 15 frames. So it should be looping. Cyclic on. Okay, now it's working. Um, let's call. Let's use this image and just this guy. And we can delete this guy. All right. So this image node is gonna spit out vectors, edges, and polygon. Let's have a look. Using viewer draw, vertices, and polygon looks like like that. It's almost like a displacement node. There's edges as well, but we don't care too much about those. Um, I'm gonna use all of this uh, RGB data and the stepping this this guy it's gonna increase the number of points let's make it like 400 points for now you can increase it up to 100 um, actually let's go up a little bit so we have 1600 points now you can increase this up to 10,000 points, that's the limit. Um, the My Bridge image actually is not square. If we check real quick, the My Bridge is, I think, 200 by 300 pixel. 300 by 200, so we cannot go that high. Let's just do it 30 by 20 or 60 by 40 that should be good so it's a this a landscape format stepping we can leave it as it is now we can see the displaced image right which is cool um it's all inside stretch up and uh, what can we do with this guy okay we can duplicate these nodes and then simply zero out this uh, rgb so we're gonna have the default points What's interesting, of course, is the we can measure the distance, the before and the after. We measure it and we have um, value. Let's check the value real quick. So we have one, blah, blah, blah. There's actually, it it's actually goes quite high here. Um, I always want to um, need a way to find the min and max of a value list of value i'm pretty sure there's a one node that does that if i'm lucky logic matrix number analyzer bounding balls volume area distance uh it's not I'm pretty sure there is one node that kind of does that. 
but anyway we're gonna just look look at it using our eyes and it's kind of guess okay 2.7 2.8 I think we have value between 0 and 3 it's probably because of the RGB so uh, it goes quite high but anyway we're gonna map the value old mean old max 0 0.3 this one 0 0.02 0 0.1 let's have a look and we're gonna use it for it's totally up to you we can use um, just circle first of all we're gonna instance some circle we're gonna use matrix in and use the position value of this uh, image uh, sampling points plug it in and now we have 1000 we have 2400 transform data that's where we're gonna instance this uh, circle and now we have a bunch of circle it's uh, still pretty interactive if we plug in the this value into the radius we're gonna see some magic and we can see the horse already okay um, we can increase this a little bit okay that's uh, starting to get something 0 0.8 okay, actually we can go even lower 0 0.01 and we don't need to see all these dots, so hide the points, hide the edges. That's, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this setup. Um, you can change the color, I'll just make it white for now. So we have this like um, half tone kind of design. This is just sampling that um, my bridge image. Let's have a look at the image itself. So that guy. Um, currently from what I tested, we can kind of scrub it uh, here and then sometimes this guy updates. Yeah, this, uh, this guy updates but then it doesn't always work. Um, I wish it's just gonna work but it's not at the moment. And I try baking it using Alembic and it doesn't quite work as well. Maybe there is another way to do it. So this is just a preview. Um, if you want to output it, we need to use um, Bmesh Viewer. And here we want to be able to just merge it. So we have these uh, vertices, edges, polygon and the matrix. matrix. So let's do let's do it just like that we have 2400 circles so keep that in mind you don't want to go too high uh, actually 10,000 still kind of okay but it's gonna start slowing down and I'm currently recording so I'll keep it uh, like a low value okay now we actually have um, a real object in the scene and this is the half tone thing if I scrub in the timeline, yeah, this guy is not uh, was not designed to update. So basically, um, this image needs to update. Um, currently, it does not do that. There must be um, a way to kind of force update the image in order for this setup to work as animated piece. It's funny thing is, uh, kind of work maybe. I can just export it out as obj or something they all gonna have uh, the same kind of a uh, number of vertices so maybe we, we can just shape key it. um yeah might give that a try why not this is actually pretty much done you know it's very simple kind of setup but still kind of useful this is like um, let's call it half tone sampling um let's try so this is frame one i'm gonna duplicate it one 
and then go to the next frame this is frame 2 next frame so there must be a way to just do this procedurally currently it's pretty much manual but sometimes you know with all the procedural procedural stuff and the automation sometimes you do want it to be manual so yeah, yeah I think humans are just weird they want it to be automated but they want it to have control over it so I'm gonna do this for 15 times just for the sake of it nearly there 13 14 15 16 actually 16 goes back to frame 1 maybe I don't need that but yeah I think this is quite nice um let's see I'm gonna take a quick screenshot of this. I, I quite like this result. Mm, display only render. I'll just screenshot this. Okay, back to previous. Now we have our bake object. I'm pretty sure we can actually use the, this bake as well. Just bake it each frame using animation nodes to click this button. So anyway, we have this guy. Let's turn off update. So yeah, we don't need to see this. So we have 15 of this. How mm. how are we going to do this? If I duplicate this guy and then use a shape key oh, actually I know shape keys retime shape keys transfer shape keys add shape keys shape join as shape okay that might work okay that's actually the same thing join as shape second one join as shape Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Join as shape so so we have now um, our animations if we just animate it so that's the first one second one and the next one next one actually we I just remember this we can't just do it like this it's gonna continue building up I remember kind of uh, doing this um, using animation node so you wanted that and then you want to do the next one and the next one you can set this up using animation nodes kind of doing this 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 I think that's kind of thing that uh, I, want, uh, I need to do um, but yeah that's pretty much uh, what I want to show to you this is the half toning of uh, it's like a resampling of image. You can do other stuff in on top of this, like solidify, make it thick, and whatnot. It's still gonna work with the these um, animations. I guess that can be quite nice. 
even though you don't need to do it this way but I guess this can be still an interesting kind of um, technique to learn you can of course do other things like with this RGB you can actually transfer the color into each um, of these uh, instance objects all within um, Spreadshop okay that's pretty much it for this uh, halftone technique it's limited but it, uh, it's, uh, it can be useful um, it's because it's just contained within Spreadshop you can just save the GIS I'm gonna export this GIS and give it to you export to GIS and yeah that's pretty much it if you have any questions feedback suggestion let me know down below and I'll see you on the next video